Welcome to this episode where we're going to talk about how I write a melody. The melody is usually what I write first in a song and the ingredients for a melody are really simple and as with everything else in this songwriting process the whole thing about keep it simple stupid really counts. So usually the simpler the melody, <coughs> the simpler the melody, the better the melody is. And when I usually write the melody first, I find that the rest of the song kind of writes itself. So uh, I find that writing the melody first is a good way to start out when writing a song. Now, what we're going to do, keeping it simple, is that we're going to use our scale. And our scale for this song is the B minor or B Aeolian scale. And it goes like this. We have on the E string, we have the 7th. 9th and 10th fret on the A string, 7th, 9th and 10th and on the D string we have the 7th and 9th. That's the whole scale. We don't need to know the entire neck in order to write a good melody. We really don't need to know anything, anything about music theory in order to write a good melody. But this is a good starting point and it's, this is what's going to make it simple to write the rest of the song as well. So we're listening to these notes. We can already start hearing melodies uh, just by playing the scale. It kind of sounds like a melody on its own, but it's kind of a boring melody. And um, there is one very effective technique to write a good melody, and it's what you're going to hear in a lot of a lot of popular songs. A lot of good melodies follow this recipe, and that is A B A C. Now, what is A B A C? Well, that means our melody consists of three parts. Is part A, is part B, and it's part C. And what usually happens is that you have part A of the melody, and then comes part B, and then you go back to part A again, and then comes part C. And in this uh, demo song that I wrote for this melody, for this uh, project, which is based off of the postmortem song from one of my albums, um, you can hear this recipe, where part A is this. Part B is and part A again and then comes part C. Now how do I get to this? How do I, how do I get from a scale to writing this melody? Um, this is where creativity comes in. Uh, there is no mathematical way of writing a good melody. You really just have to kind of listen to things in your head, play along with the scale, just play around in that little box that I gave you. Uh, just try different things like... There's endless possibilities. Now, when you've finished your song, you might want to release it, and an easy way to release it to all the big streaming services like Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, etc. is using DistroKid. DistroKid is a service that only costs $20 a year, it's really simple to use, it's what I use, and it also now supports Apple Artist Photos, so you can easily upload Apple Artist Photos to show up in the iTunes and Apple Music stores. It's a great way to get your music out there into the world, it's a great service, it's what I use, it's what I will continue to use as long as it's available. So just use the link below to sign up for DistroKid and let's get back to the video. It's all about practicing, just using the scale and trying out different things and sometimes I can sit an entire day just writing stuff that sounds like crap and other days some sometimes just a great melody just pops out. It's um, it's, it's what comes down to musical creativity, which which is a thing that you can both be trained to do, but you also kind of have to be born with or just be in the mood. Um, sometimes I write three good melodies in a day, and sometimes I spend three months without writing a single good melody. Um, so for this one, um, part A, I like to start, start out with a root note, and our root note is the B on the seventh uh, fret. And then... I like to I like to walk from the root note up to a target note, and the target note here is 
on the 10th fret. And just in order for the melody not to be so boring is that it's just... I like to walk up using the scale, so I'm going... And that's already a good part A. You can hear... And from there you can kind of try to listen, what do you want after this part? And you can try different things, like... Or we can try... Again, there's endless possibilities. And notice that I'm still just using... This one octave of the scale, I'm just going from the B to the B. And that's really all you need. You don't need to use the entire neck. If you want to, it's okay, but uh, you really don't need to. Um, so, uh, moving on from part A. I just uh, listened in my head and then I kind of came up with... Going from the 10th fret to the 7th fret on the A string and then back to the 9th fret on the E string. So our melody is like this so far. And then using the ABAC method, we're just going back to the part A again. And now we could always just use part B again, but that would be a kind of boring and repetitive melody. So now we're just going to make a slight modification of part B and turn it into part C. So part B, which is... And we're just changing it up to... Going from the 10th fret on the A string, no, E string, sorry. To the 9th fret on the A string. To the 7th fret on the A string. And then we have parts A, B, and C, and playing it all together becomes this. And then we have to kind of make it fit into the song and, and make it a little bit more, more musical. And what I like to do when writing these melodies for metal songs is that I like to kind of tremolo pick the notes instead of just going which can work in some situations, I like to go I like to think of it as a, a bow instrument, constant sound instrument, like a, like a violin or a cello where you have a constant sound, uh, unlike the guitar where you kind of have to pluck the note and then the note fades away so when I want a constant sound, I just uh, tremble a bit. And then part B. Oh, sorry. And then part C. And notice that I'm filling in the gaps as well. I don't want the pauses here. I can have the pauses like in the original song, but I'm, I'm, I'm simplifying this for this video for the purpose of learning. And the last thing I'm gonna do, to make it a little bit more musical, you can do this if you want to, I like to put in some octaves. Now, what do I mean by octaves? Well, I mean playing the same note on a different string, one octave higher. And you can usually find the octave by going on this uh, note that you have, 7th fret on the E string, going 2 strings down to the D string and going 2 frets up. So we have 7th fret on E string, 9th fret on D string. Playing these together gives you a really nice octave sound. And then you can play like this. And you can do this for an entire melody if you want to.
And that's pretty much our melody. Now we're ready to record this into the song and listen to what it what it sounds like. And then after we have uh, recorded this entire melody, we're gonna record some chords underneath it and uh, turn it into more of a complete song. So uh, stay tuned for the next video where we're going to talk about how to make chords fit under our melodies. I'll see you in the next episode. Now when you use DistroKid to distribute your music to all the big services like Spotify, iTunes, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, anything, you can also get what's called a hyperfollow link. And what the hyperfollow link does is that it gives you a link you can give to your friends and when they click that link they automatically follow you on Spotify and the album uh, that the link is associated with is automatically saved in their Spotify library. And what this does is it gives you more followers and when you get more followers it's more likely that you'll be picked up by all the different algorithms and you'll be put into more playlists and you'll be put into more suggested music and it also gives you a lot more insight into uh, what kind of people listen to your music, what other music do they listen to, and you also get the email address to each of your fan using Hyperfollow. It's one of the services you get by using DistroKid. It costs just 20 bucks a year. It's an amazing service. I wholeheartedly endorse using them. Uh, it's what I'm using. It's what I'm going to continue to use as long as the service is there.